All right. Welcome, welcome to Clear Vision Wednesday. Um, everybody here on YouTube, I'm so happy to see you. I am Claudia Mühlenweg. I'm the creator of the Natural Clear Vision Method. And every week we're going live here, we're talking about all things eyesight from different angles. And today I'm super excited about my guest that I will bring on in just a moment. But today we're going to talk about food and diet and nutrition regards to eyesight, because there's a lot of misconceptions out there. So let me welcome Bonnie London. Welcome, Bonnie, to the show. Well, hello. Well, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So Bonnie is a, has a master's degree in uh, clinical nutrition from NYU, and you are a registered dietitian. So you really know what you're talking about. You're not just some influencer that doesn't really know much. <laughs> So super excited to have you on. So maybe tell us at the beginning a little bit, how did you get into this whole field of nutrition? Well, sure. Well, growing up in the late 70s, early 80s, unknown to me, I had something called uh, polycystic ovary syndrome. For those of you who don't know, a lot of it has to do with insulin resistance. And I listened to, like many people, the recommendations at the time, which was, you know, very low fat, a lot of carbs and chronic cardio. And I was really frustrated. And I really struggled with this for about 15, 20 years. And I was always interested in the science and figuring it out. So that kind of led me in this direction. And then I've had some interesting uh, work experience. So I initially in New York City was a personal trainer at a high end gym called Equinox, where I had the opportunity to work with really healthy people and movie stars and all kinds of stuff. And then I move here where I live now currently in Sarasota, Florida, where I worked in long-term health care, otherwise known as nursing homes, for nearly a decade. And this really makes me think about our topic today, I have to say, about vision loss. Because one of the biggest lessons I learned in my time there, don't take anything for granted. I think that is beautifully said. And I think with eyesight, we do that so much, right? We just take our vision for granted until something bad happens and the eye doctor has this diagnosis for us. So that's so fascinating, your background. So you went from that kind of high end, I know Equinox, a great gym, to <laughs> working in a nursing home. And so you probably saw more people losing their vision and um, connecting the dots to what you just shared. What was your maybe biggest aha after doing all that, right? Doing your own education, overcoming your own polycystic ovary syndrome, um, working with the elderly in the nursing home, like was there like a common thread or something that you detected that you can share with us? It's the environment. Mm -hmm. And obviously diet is huge, but that is actually, that's not everything because I really do take a holistic approach. I mean, we know all the other habits, you know, sleep, physical activity, managing stress, but it is the environment. I feel like when I was working in, in the long-term healthcare, I was like a fly on the wall, kind of watching what was going on and the food that they were eating. And I, I, I have to say, yes, that would be the nugget. And we have to focus on what we can control. I absolutely love this because that aligns so much with what I do, right? We have a lot of control over our health. So in terms of nutrition, right? I mean, I'm on Instagram. I think you are too. And um, yeah. people always have these, like, don't eat this, eat this. And like these, like, you know, what do you call those memes or infographics? So what have you, like, what are some foods that you think are super important for healthy eyesight? And what are some things that we should definitely avoid? Just to kind of, with, with the caveat that maybe it's not the same for everybody, you know? That's just my own personal experience. Sure. Well, 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 first, I just I want to own that I am an omnivore because I want I really want to say that I do think that is important as you are looking for advice from an expert. Not that the advice could be slanted, but I think it is good to know that people are going to defend kind of their their way of eating. That being said, I, I mean, I think it is really the most important thing is to think about the foods we're trying to get in. Although there are a couple I'm going to mention that we want to try to eliminate as much as possible. So number one on the list would be protein from whole sources. 
So obviously, if you eat animals, we have to look high quality. Like it's not just what you're eating. You need to think about what was that animal fed. We cannot be perfect about this, but our food supply has changed uh, so dramatically. But the word is out there that consuming enough protein for every cell in our body, including our eyesight, is, is, is really, really uh, critical. And of course, if you're doing plants, you just need to make sure, obviously, that you 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 have a well uh, balanced approach to that as well. And and then after that, I would say fat is the next macronutrient that we want to consider. Now, this is a really important subject, which. Claudia and I actually touched upon before we recorded today, because unfortunately, there has been a major change in our food supply over about 150 years. And this has everything to do with vision. So what I am talking about is the shift from very, very healthy, naturally occurring omega-3s that used to be the main part of our diet before as far as those essential fatty acids and I'm sure a lot of you also, I mean, a lot of ophthalmologists will recommend their patients to be taking this even for dry eyes and all of that. But what I want to shed light on, if you're not aware of, is, is that our entire food supply has really been inundated with all of these so-called healthier vegetable seed oils. So what I'm talking about is canola oil, corn oil, safflower oil, sunflower, just to name a few. And, and to me, the, the main problem is that these are made in industry. So they are rancid and oxidized. And this doctor that I had interviewed myself, he is an ophthalmologist who really has spent a tremendous amount of work connecting this with macular degeneration and arguably other vision issues as well. So again, we're not gonna avoid everything that we know may not be the best in our diet, but I think if we can try to look for those oils, and it's not just that people are putting it on their food. What I like to say, it's in everything. It's in salad dressing. You think you're eating a healthy salad with vegetables? And, oh, and then my other uh, big concern is, dining out because it's cheap. What are they cooking your healthy vegetables in or your protein in or something, right? So I think that this is uh, a questions that you should really ask. And again, we are not going to avoid these oils. It's impossible. So, but, but I would say top down would be the liquid oils. Like I am not as concerned of it in all, every single food. It's an impossible. Now, the next major change that has happened as a food to try to not have so much of would be the high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> so I want to differentiate between fructose that naturally occurs in fruit, which I don't, I think, I still think there is many, many benefits and certainly thinking about vision. I mean, berries, cherries, all the ones with the bright colors, uh, absolutely. What I am talking about, of course, would be juicing or again, those processed foods, which have a bunch of other stuff in them. But if you look at the ingredients, you're going to turn it around and see once again, that, you know, high fructose corn syrup is added into foods like bread that isn't even sweet because it makes it more palatable, more rewarding, and makes us uh, uh, eat it more. And then, you know what food I did not mention, so I'm gonna mention it now, which is besides the berries, just in general vegetables. And of course, carrots. So the, so the, good, <laughs> so the good one was like, okay, so we kind of mix the bad and the good a little bit, but what I heard you yes. say is- Sorry. With the fats, <laughs> no, it's okay, this is really, so with the fats, um, I would love to interview that eye doctor to the ophthalmologist because I think the seed oils are the the cheap oils that are, and like you said, in all the products, like the vegetable oils, the, you know, um, sunflower, safflower, corn, all this stuff, right? This is in a lot of processed food. And I think our balance of omega-3 to 6 is really off, whereas it's 150, 100, we like, we basically, everything we ate was kind of 
you know, a good oil. So I think this is an easy piece in terms of just not buying those oils, right? You, you see these huge containers and plastic of canola oil in the stores. So that's easy to avoid. I think it's harder, like you said, that's what I heard you say, to avoid them because they're in so many foods. And I'm the one, you know, at the grocery store, like always like, okay, reading all the ingredients. Nope, that doesn't work. And sometimes it's really frustrating because you don't want to make everything from scratch and you just want to buy something you know, like a cracker or something. I have a dehydrator, but sometimes I don't have the time to make all my own crackers. And it's just, you know, very hard sometimes to find those products, like you said, that are clean, that don't have any of these oils. So bad are these oils. You talked about protein. I'm personally plant-based, but the point that you made is that proteins are important. So find healthy protein sources that don't have that junk uh, in them or fed to them if it's animals. Yes. Um, and then vegetables and fructose, so, so fruit that has healthy fructose versus the processed yes. high fructose corn syrup. Okay, did I get that right? <laughs> yes, no, you, yes, you did a great job in, in, in summarizing. And, and once again, I, I would add, because I think this number might be shocking to people, that 55% more of our current food dollars go to food that's prepared outside the home. And often I will have people that come to see me who think they're getting the healthy bag salad at the grocery store with the, the, the pocket dressing. And if you turn around and look at those ingredients, just, just my advice, do not look at the front of the container, just always turn it around and see what's in there would, would, would be my advice. I mean, we don't have to go crazy, but I think by making some of these small changes over time, you are just going to feel so much better. And absolutely, I believe that this also will help with the vision. So here's a little thing that, you know, obviously a lot of people I work with have problems reading small print, right? Um, and when before we start working together and they are able to read small print, Sometimes I just say, you know, as a little cheat, because that I don't want you to hold, be held back by not reading the ingredients. You can always snap a photo with your phone of the thing. And then, you know, if, you know, just, just as a way to kind of, kind of read the label if you really want to, and it's really small. So that's a little cheat. Um, you have, you just said something about dining out. I think that's also a really important point. So you talked about, we know that the hamburger and the French fries from McDonald's are bad. We know that, but you pointed out, first of all, even if I get my own lunch, at the grocery store and I buy the bagged salad with a little dressing or the, the little boxed uh, plastic thingy. The dressing is, you know, first of all, the plastic is not good, but also the dressing. But what about restaurants? Um, let me tell you quickly, my personal experience that there's always way too much fat on these things. It's like swimming in oil and a lot of times a lot of salt. So what are there any tips for like eating out? Because we all enjoy a nice meal out, maybe with the family. You know, we don't, we don't want to be the person who's always like me bringing my own little Tupperware, not to restaurants, but what about any tips when you go to a restaurant, um, no matter what kind, but like any tips that you can give us in terms of eating healthy when you go to a restaurant? Well, number one, again, I would pick out the protein. I always tell people to scan the menu before you go there. So at least you have some idea and you know what questions to ask. So so first you got you got that settled. And, and then, I mean, I, I mean, if you have to, I tell my clients, to be honest, to tell them they're allergic. And so get the vegetable steam, get real olive oil, bring me the dressing on the side mm -hmm. uh, or real butter. So I, as, as, as much as you can, I mean, it is, it is a challenge. Obviously, finer restaurants are going to use better ingredients, but we want to have the ability, flexibility to go wherever with, with our friends and just and make, and make the best choices. Uh, so, so those would be the big things of what they're cooking in. So obviously, which you're not eating anyways, French fries are like an absolute like, no. <laughs> So those are really good tips. I do that same thing. I actually always scan the menu ahead of time. And one reason is because I am gluten-free and plant-based. And a lot of times, you know, I like, I have to see this. Is it even, do they even have something? But I love your tips. So, you know, getting vegetables steamed. Um, it's like we become, I think, here's the thing. I think, let me know what you think about this, Bonnie, because I think you're, your Monica, or you're, the, it's like health rebel, right? A rebel. What health, you know? Healthy rebels. Is the new book. My, yes. And, and underneath that, this is my book coming up. It says live well, lose weight, defy a world that makes us fat. 
because that that is like I'm saying, I feel like it's our environment. I mean, look around 50 years ago, we 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 would be thin and healthy and we didn't have these issues that we currently are are struggling with. And and of course it's not just vision, it's everything else, but everything is connected. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The eyes, and you know, I always say it's not about this. This is attached to everything else in the body. I yes. love the healthy rabbit. I think this is a really, I absolutely love that because, you know, maybe my, my mom would always say, what do you eat? Like, why do you have to be so complicated when we eat out? And I'm like, I, I'm the healthy rebel. You know, I stand up for myself. I want to see well. I want to be healthy. And if I'm the inconvenient person, that so be it, right? But I also, you know, so I totally love that because we do have to stand up for ourselves because otherwise, you know, we are that, what is it, Harry and Sally, I think, in that movie where she's like, oh, God, she's the one with this and this and this. But I think <laughs> it's important that we, you know, and sometimes educating people on the way. So but can you, do you have a good story? I would love, I do you have a story about, you work, You know, you obviously work with lots and lots of clients. Um, do you have a story where you felt like you're, that them changing their diet and um, really help them with their vision? Uh, yes, I actually have one story that I really, it was quite dramatic and I was surprised myself. So he came to me just because in his words, he felt that he was fat, okay? He was about his late seventies and he proceeded to really uh, follow along with my diet recommendations, which I would also say are very, I'm very much into a low, low carbohydrate Mediterranean style. If I would give a name to the diet that I prescribe, but certainly low, low carbs for sure. So he lost 50 pounds and sure enough, he went back to his doctor. He had macular degeneration, the kind that you would get the shots. And the doctor said he no longer needed them. That is absolutely okay. amazing. I mean, uh, we that's amazing, Bonnie. So, so basically, those mm -hmm. shots. And the, by the way, the shots we talked about it last month on my show on AMD. Okay. They don't actually improve anything. The first of all, they're aggravating. They just stop the decline. So they didn't. Need, he didn't need the shots anymore. So that's really incredible. And I. So he said he came from the belly fat or the, you know. Yes. <laughs> I love because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what gets us to the thing to make a change. The key thing is that we have, you know. Um, Awesome. Um, anything else? Any? Do you have any other well, stories? I, uh, well, I, I would just say that, you know, m many people do come to me because they are troubled perhaps by belly fat, especially after a certain age. But the, the amazing thing is, is that they realize how it impacts positively every area of their life. And, and so I guess my message is, is that we do understand now, although we have doctors for every different specialty known to man right now, every single part of the body is connected. So yes, having now belly fat, you know, a more technical term, I want to say would be called visceral fat, which is very inflammatory and really does indicate something, again, insulin resistance, which, as I mentioned, I am familiar with. But this actually impacts, I mean, the small vessels in your eyes, everything. I mean, we know, you know, diabetic uh, retinopathy. I mean, I, I mean, it just makes sense that that it like it all goes goes together. So that's what I would say. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the spot. I think, like you said earlier, we take our eyes for granted, and a lot of times. We mm -hmm. don't connect the eyes to like our heart health, our di like diabetes, all these other things that we have going on. So I would love to ask you this because we have so much nutrition information out there right now, right? It's literally bombarding us and there's this camp and this camp and you touched on that a little bit in the beginning, but how do you guide your clients to distinguish between helpful advice, right? And what are just trends that might not actually offer any benefits to them? Well, first of all, you need to look who who is giving the advice. What you know? What what are their what are their credentials? What is their lifestyle like? Who who have who have they worked with? And and does it make sense? Like just because like a lot of clients that come to me, you know, let's just say are middle aged women, and 
if a 30 year old young guy who's in fantastic shape with a six pack is doing some intermittent fasting, it might not work for you. <laughs> it might not be the same thing. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, that, that, that being said, and so, I mean, I listen to many people myself, I do get a lot of information, but I mean, and obviously when things are repeatable or if they have research that backs it up, because anyone can say anything now, that's, that's the problem. And I, I think, keep it simple. If you do, if you would just do this one thing, think about what your grandmother or maybe even just your mother or what you ate, depending on your age, when you were like, you know, eight years old. If you would just think back about that when we were much healthier, I think this this is we've overcomplicated the it with so much information, to be honest. What do you think about portions? Because I've seen these graphics where, you know, uh the kind of the bowl of spaghetti, let's say, whatever we ate in the 70s compared to what we eat now. And especially in the US, I mean, I'm from Germany. And when I moved here, like everything, the fridges are twice as big or three times as big. The containers are three times as big. Um, I was like, so it's, so what do you think about that idea? Um, I know in Japan, I forgot that they call it, but that idea of 80% full. Um, so what do you think about that in terms of well, like? So what I do, which I think is, I mean, it seems to work really great and it's a much easier way to think about all this. Uh, I don't have people count calories at all. But what we do is we focus on, again, getting in the protein because that is really going to satiate you, getting in the vegetables and the healthy fat. So when you start eating the foods that you need to be eating, uh, it, it's like a non-issue. And if you, if you want that starchy treat, I mean, you're going out to dinner, let's just say, and you know they got really good bread there. Mm. Okay. I, you, know what, you know what the trick is? You want to save it actually for, they say, for the end of the meal. Mm -hmm. After you've had some food in there. So, so yeah, I tell people they can have the pasta or the pizza, but you're not doing that for your dinner. You're having it with it. I absolutely love this. Like overall, when you think, I mean, you have like two or three decades of experience, right? So what do you think has changed in those last 20, let's say 25 years especially like the public perception on diet and food, because we also have that food, like what's it, the food pyramid or the, the plates, the guidelines thingy, but what have you feel like has changed around diet and also how we think about our vision, if, if there is anything about vision that you've noticed, because I know that's not your main, you know, focus in your work. Well, I would say what I notice every day, I mean, I graduated in the late 90s, that everything that I learned is like the opposite. <laughs> and, and, but, but the problem is that people are still listening to these outdated recommendations. And so I think the biggest thing has changed is least not everyone, but a lot of us and waking up to our understanding of going, actually going back and, and, and saying to, as this other gentleman posed it, an ancestral diet. I mean, so many people come to see me and I will tell them, for example, oh, to have butter or if they eat meat, to have some red meat and they or eggs with the whole entire yolk in it. And, and you know what the reality is? The reality is that the diet that we are eating is the new diet. This is the new diet. This is the crazy fad diet for the past 50 years. So to me, that is like, whoa, the revelation and of course, I do believe, again, that although eyesight is not my particular area, but, but there is no question that when we get healthy with all of those metabolic numbers, which by the way, to me, one of the most important ones that you can easily look at would be looking at your triglycerides and your HDL, because that can really reflect what's going on in your liver. Because a lot of people do come to me in a panic about their cholesterol and because that, that still seems to be obviously a huge concern out there. But that can help people identify for themselves. If they are metabolically healthy, that is going to go a long way for everything. And yes, including your vision. So that is something that you find, like because I'm curious how, when do people make that decision to come work with you, right? When do they make that decision? Because I see with my mom with high blood pressure and diabetes, 
which runs in my family. And I see the doctor just saying, oh, your A1C is like 6.6, .6, you know, would be good to just get it a little lower. I'm like, mom, you oh, anything over 5.5 five is not good. But, you know, she's like, oh, you know. So what are, what are you seeing? Because the fasting blood glucose, I've also found in my experience, I'm curious what you think, you know, that might still be normal under 100, but basically there's all this stuff happening after eating or, you know, other things, the stress that doesn't, the doctor doesn't actually catch, even if they go by the traditional standards, which are horrible, um, they do not catch like these growing diseases in the body and in the eyes. What are your thoughts well, on, what are your, what are your clients like when they come to you, other than the, uh, you know, the belly fat and all that stuff, but are there sure. any labs where they're like, oh my God, now I need to do something? Yes. Well, first of all, I want to touch on what you said, because you bring up such a good point that we are looking at the wrong numbers and we are catching these conditions way, way too late. So normally people, they, I would say the belly fat's on the list. But typically, they have escalating A1Cs, the and you know their cholesterol's up, blood pressure. They have gastrointestinal issues. They usually come with a litany of issues. It's not just one thing, and and so so the thing is, if we would just do as an example uh, a fasting insulin, which which actually that can raise twenty years, twenty years before glucose goes up. So like diabetes, it's not about glucose as much as it's the insulin. So, so, you know, these are the kind of things that I, I would love to get out there. And well, I am now to your audience, but yes. <laughs> I love, so I think Bonnie, what like listening to you would be really great. It's like, what are some labs that everybody should, because I told my mom, right? Because health insurance in Germany, and I think here, like they pay for certain things. I'm like, also ask for this and this and this, and now we have direct labs and, you know, and even your doctor, you just pay a little bit more, but do you have a list of labs that you think everybody should get that is probably not covered in the, you know, general like wellness checkup where you would say, yeah, well, insulin, I'll, give right? you, I'll, I'll just give you a few that, I mean, a lot of times doctors might do it. And, and to me, there's only reason to take a lab, by the way, in my opinion, or doing a test, if there's something that we're going to do on the other end when you get the result. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So, so I mentioned the triglyceride HDL, because that's something most people get, and it still is something that gives us some good information, but certainly doing a fasting insulin would be fantastic. Uh, but also now this is an emerging marker with, with metabolic dysfunction is uric acid. And so typically we used to think of it just with gout, but actually now we understand that it actually can precede, you know, the blood sugar, the blood pressure, insulin resistance, and all of that. So that would be another one. Now, this one doesn't have to do exactly with uh, blood sugar, but I do always ask people to get a homocysteine because it does have to do with cognitive decline as well as cardiovascular disease. And it's so simple to rectify. So like people, for example, might be given metformin, but then the doctors are not sharing with them that it might deplete their B12 and then their homocysteine could go up. You see how this all uh, uh, works uh, works together? And, and that, oh, another one is GGT, which just has to do with liver, which is another thing, and toxins. And certainly there are a bunch of others. I mean, if your doctor's able, I always do like a full thyroid panel and a full lipid panel, which is not just the LDL, but getting even particle sizes and hormones. I mean, all of these uh, play a role. So as far as your doctor will sign off on, so I always give them the list of like 25 different things and see what the doctor will sign. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love that. So, and I love what you said too. It's really important that you actually have a plan in action. I'm working with a health coach, nutritionist myself, because I can understand a lot of the labs, but not everything. And I'm like, at this point, you see, like, you know, and things that are labeled as normal, you know, the functional medicine or like a registered you know, dietitian, like you, you were like, ah, uh -uh, that's not really normal. We want something optimal, not normal. So, I love that Perfect. you said we have, to have a plan. So that, and also not test anything randomly, but getting a really clear idea based on this. So I have one last question, then I want to look quickly on YouTube. Uh, we have a lot of comments. Uh, okay. I any questions. So what are, what are you thinking is like, in terms of emerging research 
or trends? Like, what are you excited about, especially when it comes to protecting our vision? Is there anything that is kind of ongoing or, you know, just emerging new trends or research that you feel is important for people to know? Well, again, I think to me, going back to the glucose and insulin resistance and just getting on these markers, I think that this is it's it's emerging and that we understand how these things are all connected is is what I would say. And uh, I don't know if any of you follow. Hold on. Now I'm blanking on his name, but he's like the longevity expert. They are actually doing studies about David Sinclair. Is it David Sinclair? Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> yes, but I know they are doing studies, which is pretty exciting about what, what's going to happen. And so, you know, what I, I would just like to say that obviously diet is not everything, but, but I would say confidently it is a part of any plan that you are going to do to improve your vision is going to be engaging in the healthy diet and lifestyle. And then just one more little thing I wanted to add because this is very inexpensive and I think it's really, really helpful is getting a body composition test because that will also give you a very helpful indication because we have something out there called a uh, TOFI, if you ever heard of it, which people who are their normal weight, they're thin on the outside, but maybe fat on the inside. So then we can pick up on those people. TOFI? Yeah, TOFI. Thin outside, fat inside. Oh, I know. I've never heard that. Oh, okay, I learned something new. So we have a few questions on YouTube. Um, let me look. One is about uh, bread. Like I know you said very low carbs, but if somebody wants to eat bread, um, what is the best one? And then also what about sprouted bread? Uh, yes, I would definitely agree with sprouted bread as being a better option. Or else I recommend, I mean, obviously we're just taking that someone's, you know, not gluten free because that's a whole nother uh, discussion. But I still do recommend if you can get like homemade and a lot of bakeries, I buy it here all the time, uh, sourdough bread or rye bread. And then, yeah, sprouted is great because there are anti-nutrients, a lot of the grains. So the sprouting can actually help out a lot. Okay, that is great. Somebody was asking about um, fasting um, insulin tests. You need to be fasted for 12 hours. I think so, right? That's, uh, yeah, we can, that's a question. How long do you have to be fasted for that? Yeah, I believe it's just 12 hours. Yeah, yeah. I don't see any, I mean, lots of people said they make their own dressings and, you know, okay. like people watching this stuff is, you know, we talked about it earlier, you know, we already attract the people you know, the, that are on that leading, you know, we are like the the health rebels, rebel health. No, what was the health I mean, rebels? Listen, bravo to your entire group, because anyone that would even think about uh, working on their vision themselves, I think it, it does speak to that they are a certain group of people. Yeah. One last question I see here is um, homocysteine. What reason uh, did uh, Bonnie say that testing homocysteine is connected to, or what is that connected to? Well, I am not sure if it being connected to specifically vision, but it is connected to risk factors for cognitive issues as well as cardiovascular disease. And the thing is, it's not expensive and it's so simple to, to help by giving someone some B and folate, basically. So, that's it. I feel, isn't I that also feel, connected to stress? Homocysteine is not like an uh, expression of stress, uh, elevated stress, or am I mixing that up? Not, yeah, I don't think so. But that is another marker, actually, uh, that I didn't mention, which is C-reactive protein. Because we want to look at the markers of inflammation in our body. Again, just thinking about vision, it's, I mean, it doesn't just you know, I, like I always talk about stress with people, as I'm sure you do, too. It doesn't stay in your head. I mean, it actually communicates with every cell in your body. And I've actually heard of people with their vision and it coming back after they had like a life altering experience, because that's how intense this can be. Absolutely. Stress is really what I call the root cause of, you know, lots of vision problems and stress, oh, obviously, oh, yes. mental, yes. physical and spiritual, emotional levels. It's not, just, you know. Yes. Um, I think that was what, okay, really quick before we close this. So the gluten, you said that's a whole nother topic. And if that's so long, I have to have you back. 
But uh, what, are, what are your thoughts? Because I'm actually told and I've noticed that myself that I need to stay off gluten. I got off gluten a little bit last year in Europe and sure enough, I had some symptoms. So what are your thoughts well, on this? Uh, well, I, well, what I would say is that it has been proven, uh, but, you know, in research that every single human being get, gets a little bit of uh, intestinal permeability from consuming gluten. That does not mean that everyone needs to be gluten free, but I certainly do recommend limiting it and not doing how many people in our country, which I know it's not your audience, but I'm just mentioning, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. Because, and that, but the other issue, which is specific, unfortunately, to the United States, is, is that these grains even are, are sprayed with all of the glyphosate, which I think we are just beginning to appreciate how these compounds are impacting our health. So that would be my other thing about gluten. So I basically do recommend uh, gluten-free most of the time for every person that comes in my office. Okay, that's good to know because <laughs> being from Germany, right? I mean, we are known for our bread and our beer and sauerkraut. Um, and obviously I ate a lot. I mean, we have amazing bread. I mean, but yeah, giving that up in a way, I, I actually appreciate it now because I have healthy alternatives that are super delicious. And I don't really do gluten-free bread itself. I just, you know, that's a whole nother discussion, like you said. But I think it doesn't mean that you just have to suffer. You just have to learn, right? Is that you have to just learn how to make healthy alternatives that are delicious, right? right. So that's that, that was like, thank you. Um, anything you want to add to the whole thing we talked about? So we have to remember, just to summarize what you said, the eyes are part of the whole thing. So we cannot just separate the eyeballs, right? Like this. Um, right. Uh, we talk about inflammation, that inflammation is really the root, like that is really connected to a lot of these diseases. Um, and that the trends in nutrition are, can you repeat that? Like, just so do I'm, you're doing a better job than I do in terms of like, we've now realized what are the newest, what is the new science saying about food? Well, I mean, I mean, I think we are appreciating of because we're in an epidemic now of not just obesity, but currently to their latest numbers, about 92 percent of the entire country has some sort of metabolic dysfunction. So wow. I think we realize this is this is a wake up call. We need to do something uh, different. And so the numbers with the vision that this, if you look at the numbers of being, people being diagnosed with issues, it has gone along with all oh, yeah. of these metabolic issues. So to me, this, it, it just, it just makes sense uh, that this is what to focus on, because of course, what we didn't talk about was just, you know, any of the specific nutrients that we know could be beneficial for eyesight that are it, you know, different compounds that are in vegetables or in sockeye salmon. But obviously to me, the biggest nut to crack that we talked about today would be getting getting underneath that metabolic dysfunction and working on your, your health. So thank you so much, Bonnie. And I think I want everybody to know how they can work with you because what I what I learned for myself is that, you know, medical doctors are not trained in nutrition. They just, they just keep you and that not from, like I always think from not dying, they keep you like surviving, but not thriving. And so um, anybody that feels like, call, like, you know, I need to be more proactive and actually know what works on me. How can people find you? How can people work with you? What's a good place to connect with you? Well, I don't know if you want me to give my number, but it's no, it's, no, 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 we don't do that. That would okay, be crazy. So, okay, so it's it's londonwellness.net, but I also want to mention because I think you did share it with your audience that I do, I did spend quite a bit of time putting together a, a dining out cheat guide that has that reviews in much more detail of what I discussed today. So then on there, you would you would be getting all of my um, information as far as being able to connect up with me. Okay, yeah, I have that here. And we have all of this in the YouTube show notes. So underneath the video, all yeah. of the things, how you can find her on, on Instagram, on YouTube, you know, your website, all of that is linked. So just for everybody watching live, you just have to click there and find it. Thank well, you so much. Is there any kind of a last statement you want to say before we go off or end this, this session? Well, 
I mean, thank you for having me. This was a great experience and bravo, seriously, to you and your, your whole community for, for really looking at your vision, not taking it for granted and being proactive because it, it, we still are in the minority of people d doing something like that. So I, I say thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing more life and nutrition, which is one of the hugest, you know, issues. I think even uh, Huberman Lab and the Huberman whose podcast I love, he always tries to stay away from uh, nutrition advice because that's the easiest, uh, you know, mm. conflict. So thank you so much for uh, helping us understand some of the foundational things that everybody has in their control to make changes. And I really appreciate you, Bonnie, and goodbye, you two.